In Korea, girls should not walk alone at night. This woman's name is Lisa. Today is her husband's birthday. She was going to go to the police station to spend his birthday with him in person. But now it seems she can't go. There was a man in black behind her all the time. Lisa was scared. In a panic, she spilled the lunchbox for her husband on the floor. There was no time to clean it up. Lisa found a hidden corner to call her husband. Unfortunately, her husband Mike was on an arrest mission. Did not hear. I had no choice. Lisa had no choice but to call the 112 number for help. The caller was a policewoman named Amy. She hoped that Lisa could tell us something. She wanted Lisa to say something. Characteristic so that the police could locate the place. At this point, Lisa was so nervous that she was incoherent. She only said the rock church and hung up the phone in a hurry. At the same time, the man in black who was following her also arrived nearby. He was like a hungry beast, searching for his prey. This way, Amy, who had been waiting for a phone call for a long time, was thinking about calling Lisa. Her stupid boss couldn't wait any longer. Against Amy's advice, she pressed the call back button. The sudden ringing startled Lisa. It also exposed her location to the night. The man in black quickly found Lisa who was answering the phone. Then he ignored Lisa's plea. From his pocket. He took out a hammer. He smashed it down hard. Amy at the police station was stunned. She listened to the sound of the hammer on the phone, but there was nothing she could do. On the other side, Mike was celebrating with his colleagues for the successful arrest of the suspect. Suddenly, he received a call from his man Frank. Frank had tears in his eyes. He told him about Lisa's murder. Mike thought Frank was joking with him until he called his wife's phone and found no answer. Unsure, Mike rushed to the scene of the accident, looking at his wife's note wishing him a happy birthday and the food scattered all over the place. Mike Mike was in a trance. He collapsed next to his wife's body. He gently touched his wife's feet covered with mud. Before he knew it, he was sobbing uncontrollably. Fortunately, the police soon caught the suspect who was a nightclub doorman. The police soon caught the suspect, Ko Dong Chul, who had several previous convictions. They recovered the bloody clothes with Lisa's DNA from his house. All that was left was for Amy to testify in court. However, on the day of her appearance, Amy, who was a witness, was adamant. The voice of the murderer she heard on the phone and Go Dong Chul's voice were different. The courtroom was in an uproar over this statement. Mike was furious. It wasn't enough to kill his wife. Now, he's helping the murderer get away with it. If eyes could kill, Amy would have died 100 times. And that's when Amy noticed Mike. She did not panic and explain to the judge why. It turns out that before the murder, Amy's father happened to be on patrol in the neighborhood. Her father was also killed by the killer. And the murderer was very brave. After the murder, he used the walkie-talkie to talk to Amy. Judging from the voice of the walkie-talkie, the killer must be between 25 and 35 years old. His voice was lower than Ko Dong Chul's voice, and his jaw makes a clattering sound. Mike was angry. Gao Dong Chul himself has confessed to his crime, plus the blood found in his house, the bloody clothes with his wife's DNA found in his house. He suspected that Amy had taken hush money from Ko Dong Chul. Amy told the judge, Gao Dong Chul was probably just a scapegoat. He most likely knew the killer. In the end, the court used Amy's testimony. Ko Dong Chul was acquitted of all charges. Mike's wife's murder case became an unsolved case. Until three years later, a kidnapping case was being broadcast on TV. She was walking past the door. She happened to hear the father of the child calling the police. Amy didn't panic and called the police and told them the kidnapper was the father of the child, although he used a voice changer. But the frequency of the voice remained the same. Sure enough, the father confessed. It was a play he put on by himself. The purpose was to extort a ransom from the child's grandfather. Three years ago, her father was brutally murdered by a serial killer. The killer is still at large. The purpose of her return this time, to use her powers to catch the murderer. At her suggestion, the police set up the 112 reporting center Golden Time Unit. Amy believes that 10 minutes after the victim calls the police is the best time to rescue. As long as the police respond in time, 90% of tragedies can be avoided. She also proposed Mike to be the team leader of the rescue team. Mike was furious. He drank every day after his wife's death to numb himself. He had recently been removed from major crimes. He always thought, Amy gave false testimony because she received money from Ko Dong Chul, so he let her wife's murderer off the hook. Angry, he grabbed Amy's shoulder. He asked Amy about the real reason for her murder. At that moment, the police center received a distress call from a kidnapped high school girl. Wong Phong Lin called for help. Considering the urgency of the situation, Amy broke away from Mike's hands. Amy entered the center and spoke directly with Phong Lin Wong. While comforting Phong Lin, who was already in a state of confusion, while having her men use cell phone signals, roughly located the possible crime locations. Phone Lin told Amy she had been kidnapped by a madman. She was chatting with a strange man online. He promised that as she met with him, he would give her $100,000. Halfway home, she sensed the danger and wanted to go home, but the man attacked her from behind. After that, 
She appeared in this place. Amy wanted more information from Phone Lin. Phone Lin looked around. She found this place full of sand and bricks. It looked like a construction site. There were also many different kinds of tools on the ground. Amy was a little nervous after hearing that. If it's a construction site, it means that the murderer didn't do it for sex, but most likely for the purpose of murder. She immediately pressed the emergency button. The police chief was outside watching the situation. Mike was reluctant to act, but hearing Feng Lin's plea for help on the phone, he thought of his wife of three years ago, so he put aside his prejudices and went to the scene of the crime. On the other hand, the smart Phone Lin picked up a brick and threw it down from the third floor. The murderer thought Phone Lin had jumped out of the window to escape, immediately chased him out. Phone Lin took the opportunity to hide from the third floor to the second floor. After she calmed down, she thought of some more information. She remembered that there was a children's playground in the place where she was knocked out. There were a lot of flowers and green things around. Mike arrived at the amusement park and was dumbfounded. There were hundreds of families living here. There are countless fancy things. It would take forever to find them all. Just then, Amy heard a strange sound from Feng Lin's phone. It sounded like an electric current. It sounded like she had heard it before, but for a while, but could not remember. Seeing the bricks on the ground, the kidnappers finally knew they had been fooled, so immediately turned back, saw the third floor was empty. He thought Phone Lin had escaped, so he took the hammer and chased out in anger. Mike. On the other hand, he kept asking passersby about the fancy places around. From the mouth of an old lady learned, nearby an abandoned kindergarten wall, there are some flowery paintings. Mike immediately rushed there, but nothing was there. This way, the panting killer returned to the house again. He was ready to escape, but just then, he saw Foam Lin's hairpin at the door of the stairs on the second floor. He guessed that Foam Lin must be hiding in the room on the second floor. The Killer dragged Phone Lin to the bathroom and knocked her out. Then he started to select tools from the kit. Amy heard from the phone. Amy heard the sound of the killer holding a hammer. She felt bad. She tried to think about the sound she heard earlier and what the fancy green thing was that Phone Lin was talking about. Finally she remembered. It was the rotating light outside the barber store. The sound of ZZZ. It was the sound of electricity from the lamp inside. She immediately told Mike this information. Mike remembered. Just now he did pass a barber store. He ran all the way to the barber store. Then he punched the glass and broke in. Just as the killer dropped the hammer. Mike arrived just in time. Mike was able to subdue the bastard in a matter of minutes. Looking at the female trophies collected in the killer's bag, Mike thought of his wife. He wanted to kill the bastard with a hammer, but he thought of his wife's unrequited revenge, but he put the hammer down. At the police station, the police chief saw Amy's performance. From the time the police were dispatched to the time they caught the culprit, it took less than 15 minutes in total. The director recognized the existence of the Golden Time team and decided to give them a six-month test period. After this incident, Mike vaguely felt felt that Amy can really hear voices that ordinary people can't hear. He gradually believed in Amy's words. The person who killed his wife might really be someone else. So he decided to officially become the captain of the Golden Time team. He decided to work with her to find his wife's murderer. Voice is a short mystery series in one episode. Each episode has a story. I will tell it all in multiple episodes. Your attention is my motivation. See you tomorrow.